and gals, me Mudahar, and uh, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Aiden Ross, but I'm also not the biggest fan of content ID and copyright abuse on the platform. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I usually don't really like to do these kind of call outs or really, you know, go after certain creators or, or really jump into it. First off, the drama really isn't something that I enjoy. It's not really drama in my opinion. Drama to me is like really stupid shit. When it comes to actual, like tangibly, like harmful things that are happening on YouTube on the platform, I like to speak out about it because it leads to a larger issue. So for me, when I talk about Aiden Ross, it's definitely because what no, Muda does not have a fucking hate boner for me. What are you talking about? He he literally, bro, li, little bro's acting like she's little sis acting like she's fucking in prison right now. No, no, stop. The policy is, the policy is not moving her until she until she stops crying. Anyway, good job, good job. Sit, sit. Too young to fucking do sit and lay down. She literally doesn't understand anything. She thinks I dropped the fucking treat there. She's like smelling the area. Chill out. I'm not turning the kayak cam back on. She's, been a, she's being a menace a little bit right now. Um, what was I? Aiden is ruining YouTube. Come on. He isn't even that relevant. You all should just ignore, ignore him completely. And he will understand how stupid his moves are. Dude. This is not about me or other people, okay? This is not about other, like, large content creators, weirdo. Uh, that video already got 1.5 million views, okay? That video is not going to go more viral than that. Like, he's not going to make any money off of that. Do you understand? The real problem is he's going after small content creators while abusing DMCA laws, okay? He's stealing money from smaller content creators while flexing. And no, Muda doesn't have a hate boner for me at all. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I've literally been on his podcast and we talk all the time about Steam Decks. So you're not right about that. What he is doing on YouTube, like a lot of other creators, abusing the content ID and copyright system actually can lead to really, really bad effects on the platform. And YouTube yeah. should step in and make sure the abuse doesn't happen. I mean, they say there's penalties. I've never seen these penalties goddamn enforced. Now to understand, I really don't like Aiden Ross as a character, mostly because I think he's a genuinely harmful individual. To give you a little bit of context into this character, uh, a year ago when I was looking into him for Rubet, Save the Kids, during the height of cryptos and, and influencers, not that that's gone away or anything, I mean, there's plenty of bullshit that happens all the time, Aiden Ross was a character that shilled MILF token. Now, MILF token is a meme currency that if you were dumb enough to join his escapades and buy, well, you lost your money. Why? Because it's a meme token. You think MILF token is worth anything, you idiots? It's not, okay? Now, of course, after this shilling, Aiden had this to say about MILF token. Listen to this real carefully. Chat, by the way, that MILF token shit I did a while back, I already told you guys, don't buy that shit. I got paid a bag to do that shit. <laughs> like, I don't give a f how many of you guys actually bought it? <laughs> after promoting such a scam token and then after a while telling people, I hope you didn't buy it. <laughs> you can tell that Aiden Ross is not just a kid. He's a fully grown adult that actually has scammed his audience. Doesn't care about it. No moral compass. No nothing. For me, I have no respect for a scumbag like this and absolutely never will. Now, of course, since then, the absolute ounce of respect I possibly could have had has absolutely cratered and hit rock bottom center of the fucking earth type shit after looking at some of this. So this is where we get into like some real YouTube content territory breaking uh, situations. Listen to this one. W, chat, by the way, this is um, Hassan's head moderator, chat. So, of course, just for context, this guy... The funniest is when motherfuckers are like, bro, Hassan, they come in here with a sock account. They say, Hassan, just say you're wrong and move on. They get immediately banned. And then they are, like, permanently fucking complaining about how I am, uh, you know, banning dissenting opinions. It's like, no, I I'm not. You're just a fucking idiot with a goddamn sock account who's trying to derail the fucking conversation. Shut the fuck up. A guy named Internet Anarchist is a content creator on YouTube that really covers trending topics. Kind of like a Sunny V2 type person. Um, this is not a moderator for Hassan Piker, the live streamer. 
No, this is somebody random that made a video talking about, you know, the whole Sneeko and Charlie situation. And uh, in this case, he used clips from Aiden Ross's streams, Aiden Ross's interviews, where Aiden Ross went in and actually filed a manual copyright claim on their video. Put a W the And he openly stated he did it to his ops, remember. Chat, we stole $8,000 from him. W. He needed that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's like a terminally online child actually salivating at the thought that they stole money. It's not even about the money. It's about the false copyright claim you did it. You know, if this went to a court of law and literally lawyers had to fight over if this was maliciously done, Aiden literally loses. Okay, I... I okay, Kaya's wilding out. I gotta take her outside for one second. I'm gonna... I'll be watching on my phone. But this one isn't second. even the only clip. Listen to this one. It actually gets downright comically evil. I'm not gonna lie. If I don't f them, do it. If I f with the YouTubers you're doing it to, don't do it. Like this guy's an actual dick sucker, bro. So he deserves to get copyrighted. He's a dick sucker. He deserves a chat. He knows what he's doing. He's making my. He's using my own content to make me look like a bad guy. I don't think your content really needs to be manipulated to make you look like a bad guy, Aiden. But see, this is where I'm talking about maliciously applying copyright strikes. You see, this is a false copyright strike, not on the basis that what he's going after is necessarily somebody who's misusing his content and going against fair use principles. He's literally targeting somebody that is critical of him in a negative way. You know, if you talk shit about people on the internet, congrats. Look, I'm on the internet. If you make a whole video shitting on me, the last thing I'm going to do is give you a content ID claim or a copyright strike, A, because it's completely unethical. It's your right to criticize me, especially if you're using my content in a fair use manner. And also, it's Absolutely. fucking illegal. Now, of course, the US legal system is pretty much designed to favor the person that has the most money. So if internet anarchists wanted to go and fight back, well, they would probably be hitting their head up against a brick wall. Not saying that he can't fight, but obviously, if you don't have the funds to go up against a large streamer like Aiden Ross, you'll- But I think he fucked over enough streamers, and he fucked over enough content creators, and enough people fucking hate him that, like, I'm not gonna lie, I think that- um, I, I think that we could get enough funds together. I mean, I'll fucking- I'll- I'll help people, like I said. Straight up. He'll be bullied into no- Train will bankroll him? Yeah, okay. First of all, you have to understand that, like, this isn't just about who has more money, okay? This is also about, like, this isn't just about who has more money at the end of the day. What is this? Didn't you see this? Checked on this, and it looks like the claim has been closed by the content owner. Oh, they, uh, oh, they fucking uh, went and, and uh, reversed this one. Okay. Fucking pussy. Yeah, that's right. You fucking bitch. Exactly. Motherfucker. Because he knows. He knows that's fucking bullshit. He knows it's fucking bullshit. Oh my god. What a fucking asshole, dude. What a fucking bitch. I'm so glad. I'm glad that this uh, was resolved. I'm glad that this, was re this matter was resolved. He's such a fucking asshole, dude. What a fucking piece of shit. YouTube should make it so that there is a literal... YouTube should make it so that there is a literal fucking uh, mark for content creators that actually are I issuing false copy strikes. They receive no punishment whatsoever. Wait, what the fuck? Wait, what the fuck? Wait, hold on. What happened on this? I think, wait, did YouTube resolve mine too? Oh my God. Wait, 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 wait. I'm looking at it right now. It says, important notifications. You've received a copyright claim. I click on the view options. And it says video, vo wait, oh no, the one, wait a minute, wait a minute, whoa, 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 well, 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 wait a minute, video, Andrew Tate cannot handle my questions, video copyright details, channel not affected, interesting, interesting development that just happened on this video, huh, interesting, strange, interesting, peculiar, these are words I would use. Let's continue with this video. So tomorrow. I think it's partially one of these reasons why some of these creators don't target people that have like larger followings because they know if a court fuck, case was- Kaya is in the- Fuck, hold on. Hello. 
She she is ungovernable. To actually happen, they would be pissing money away against somebody that has money to piss away too. It'd be one giant pissing match. And when the court case is done, they know full well they will be countersued and they will have to end up paying way more money <laughs> than what they initially even put into the law. He did it for the content, nothing more. In a way, you uh, talking about it helped him get more exposure. Dude, if someone is stealing money from a person who is like not that great, that doesn't have great finances, someone who's broke, but a content creator trying to make it, right? And then they openly go and fucking claim that they are doing it uh, specifically for, you know, no I other reason other than just like, just to fuck with them. And I'm not talking about Aiden Ross stealing money from me. I don't give a fuck about that. I'm talking about who he, he is uh, stealing from. Many other much smaller content creators, okay? That motherfucker, of course I'm going to fight against that. It doesn't matter if he's doing it for the clout. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Like, it, it, this is such a ridiculous thing. Why would I fucking sit there and show my belly? Like, what do you mean? No, he's like literally fucking scared. He is scared that like the entirety of the YouTube commentary space is going to fucking launch a, the orbital rockets against them, which he deserves, by the way. It's fucking, oh shit, no, you can't get up there. Like, what do you mean? Even if it's not literally for me, okay? Even if it's just, even, even if it's not for myself, when I saw the fucking internet uh, anarchist thing, I was already frustrated. That's crazy. Lawsuit to begin with. Now I watched this video from Internet Anarchist and it absolutely used a bunch of clips from Aiden Ross, Charlie, so on and so forth. Now, of course, I think there's a lot of commentary in this and the clips that were used were done in a fair use manner. To understand fair use, we have to actually look at the law itself. Now, of course, fair use, which is, this is coming from the Columbia University Libraries, okay? Even if you hate me, you learn something from my channel. <laughs> fair use is not what you expect. There are four factors to the balancing of fair use. Now, again, I want to just stress this really quickly because some YouTubers had actual court cases and won against other YouTubers. That doesn't necessarily mean their, uh, you know, uh, determination of fair use is applicable to all. So obviously, uh, you know, Ethan Klein and Matt Haas, uh, their situation was different. Ethan actually used very, very small portions of the work and created a transformative topic, a transformative video. If you just download somebody's entire content and re-upload it to your channel, obviously that's not fair use. Now, even if you react to their video in whole and you say, oh, I doubled the length of the original video by adding commentary, realistically, there are four pillars of fair use. You may have inadvertently created a market substitute for the actual product. You may have yeah. actually just re-uploaded the entire video and a case could be made by the original copyright holder as to why would some- The Hazan Eclipse Industrial Complex absolutely uh, violates that, but the real reason why nobody does anything or says anything about it is because the reason why nobody does or says anything about it is because everyone understands that you're like a fucking asshole if you were to, if you were to go up against it or most people actually personally do not mind it. As a matter of fact, they like it. There are violators in the Hassan Abbey Clips Industrial Complex that aren't fan channels, as you know, that literally go and will try to DMCA copy strike my fucking VODs from other fan channels. Those guys are fucking assholes. You know what I mean? We've, we've discussed this so many fucking times. Also, don't you openly uh, allow people to use your IP? Yes, I do, which is why there are certain issues certain issues sometimes that arise from that there is going to be a day where i will not be able to like very easily carry her with one hand and put her over this fucking crate and i am not excited for that day yeah your main channel editors usually cut down the og content and leave out bits for the context of your commentary right exactly on my own personal channel um every single one of my videos if you go on my own personal channel i, I mean I, I don't know if there's like super old ones maybe they like kind of violate that but we make a very good and very honest effort to ensure that all of the fucking videos are heavily edited. Most of it's my commentary that's transformative. Like, you will not find a fucking video so, where it's just like... it's it's. You will not find a video where uh, I'm just, like, reacting to someone else's YouTube content with no fucking commentary whatsoever. Because I like to... I like to use YouTube videos to craft a narrative because I think it's more visually pleasing. It's visually stimulating. Even then, that might not technically fall within the boundaries of fair use, but it doesn't matter because most of these people that I'm reacting to are my friends or other media partners that are aware of me and, and totally like that I look at their fucking content. 
And therefore, it's not something that someone would ever pursue. If they would, it would be very odd. Okay? You constantly leave your stream with the video running, but yeah, most of the time you do it correctly. Yes, when I do that, for the record, it's usually, again, I just did that. I did that with Mudahar's video, right? Like, there was, there was a brief 20-second vin- window where I had to run outside. So why did Ethan snake your ass? Ethan did not snake my ass. Stop trying to fucking, you know, create additional drama. Anyway, anyone that says I'm constantly fucking leaving videos up and, like, leaving my seat is probably running off of, like, super, super old drama at this point. React gate drama that... uh never really went anywhere but you know it's the reason why people always say that i am uh currently uh, is the reason why people always say that i'm like a oh, fucking hassan doesn't react he just like leaves videos on um i respond to it but i probably shouldn't you're right you you're live like eight hours a day sometimes if you need to step away periodically it's totally understandable yeah i mean life happens there are literal emergency situations where like sometimes i uh have to get up and i'm not just talking about pissing okay um, but ultimately, like I said, the people that we are, um, the, the people that I'm reacting to, like the overwhelming majority of the content that I react to, unless it's like Ben Shapiro or something, and I'm not leaving that on to fucking walk away or anything like that. But, um, the, the, uh, videos I'm reacting to are from my friends who don't have an issue with me reacting to those videos. They like it. And they actually, as a matter of fact, encourage it. You know what I mean? I hope I can stop arguing with Aiden fans already now that your content is resolved. It's tiresome. Yeah. I just, I hope he fucking gets better. Like, I, I don't know if Aiden Ross will get better, but I really do hope he gets better. I'm not even kidding. Sounds like you make your own rules just saying. Well, the irony is that with copyright, you kind of do, actually. Uh, I've talked about this many times over. Uh, video games are DMCAable. As a matter of fact, at the time, everyone said, Hassan, you're fucking wrong. You're an idiot. You're delusional. And guess what? Nintendo is currently showing that those are enforceable DMCAs that they are utilizing. They're fucking assholes for this, but it doesn't matter. They're doing it regardless. They have the legal right to be able to do so. Okay? Nintendo does it. They are, uh, they are public enemy number one for that reason. But they do it. They do it all the fucking time. And they're pieces of shit for doing it. And everyone recognizes they're pieces of shit for doing it. All matter of content in the Let's Play streamer region is technically on shaky DMCAable grounds. Every single thing that you do on stream, for the most part. It's just it's a matter of imagination at this point. The fucking images that we use as emotes technically could be subject to copyright. Everyone always says you're wrong, but it doesn't matter. Nintendo quite literally has done so. Like I said, they say that I'm wrong. It's up to the creator. It's up to the holder of that IP to not behave like a fucking piece of shit. Okay? It's the unfortunate reality. The the way that these laws are written, my own personal opinion on the matter does not mean anything. I am not a fucking IP guy. You know I don't like IP. You know I uh, live my uh, own morals out pretty, pretty perfectly. My fucking haters will never admit that, but, you know, that's the... That's the unfortunate reality. Things behind me could get DMCA'd, uh, technically. Like, things behind me that uh, are, are brands could uh, get me into trouble with copyright. Um, of course, no one would enforce that because that's insane. But, uh, you know, that is the reality. Anything could be copyrighted just as Disney. Exactly. Disney literally told a parent that they could not have Spider-Man on a four-year-old leukemia death a four-year-old child who died of leukemia, they, they said that they could not put Spider-Man on the fucking gravestone. If you think that copyright doesn't extend to every single facet of our existence, I don't know what to tell you, okay? You're out of your fucking mind. Every video game publisher could decide they don't want their game streamed and game streaming would cease to exist. Exactly. Same goes for reacting to YouTube videos. It was Winnie the Pooh, I thought. No, it was Spider-Man. Now, of course... I have talked about this so, so, so many times on this broadcast. It's one that frustrates me to no end, okay? Uh, I think it's, it's really fucked up that people abuse this shit. But ultimately, a lot of the content that we look at here on the Twitch sphere, whether it be XQC watching full episodes of SpongeBob SquarePants or me fucking watching whatever TV show, old TV show that I'm watching, or just a random YouTuber's videos that I'm watching, um... All of that could technically be DMCA'd. Yeah, that's not a fake story. Here it is. Disney bans grieving father from having Spider-Man on son's grave, like literally. 
Disney wants to preserve the magic of its characters. Like, if you think that these guys are not fucking evil villains in the way that they're operating, I don't know what to tell you. Firewatch creator actually copy striked uh, PewDiePie from playing his game on stream when he was doing a Let's Play. It happens. It has happened before, and it will happen over and over again. <clears throat> anyway. Somebody go and visit my channel or view the content natively if they've already viewed the entire piece. You can't just put up an entire movie, review it by commentating over it, and not expect Disney or any large megacorp to completely not take you down. There is a lot of factors that go into it, and it literally is one of those reasons why fair use is tested, in my opinion, pretty individually on a case-by-case -case basis. But that doesn't mean, like, for instance, in the next few years, if people actually do start issuing lawsuits, that it couldn't negatively affect fair use as it exists. Again, the more lawsuits that happen, the more precedents can create it. And sometimes yeah. precedents yeah. are not all good. The He's way right. that copyright is being handled by creators like Aiden Ross is literally akin to setting up a minefield. And usually when people step on a mine, you know, hopefully it doesn't go off. But if it does, you know, it, it is absolutely a catastrophic moment. It's bad enough that the actual like big mega corporations literally abuse YouTube's copyright systems. And YouTube needs to step in to at least prevent YouTubers from abusing the goddamn system itself. Yes. Just based on the clip I showed you, it was a malicious strike, a malicious claim that should absolutely be reversed by YouTube. Because again, if a tool like this could be used to abuse, because it is, smaller creators, then that's not a platform that we should necessarily support. That's not a thing we should be supporting. Now, Aiden Ross is not exactly the most intellectual fucking person that I've ever seen because literally in the statements that I just played, it almost is like they don't care about fair use. If they were to go to a court, you could absolutely argue that they're doing this maliciously and they have literally no basis to properly file a DMCA or court claim on. And he's not the only streamer that has been alleged to do this. There are other streamers who are alleged to actually do content ID strikes. One of them is I Show Speed, who has been alleged to do content ID strikes or content claims through third party like MCN. So listen to this one from Jabroni. So I just want to show you guys what it looks like when you get a manual copyright claim on YouTube. This is different from when it's automated. If you use like a copyrighted song or a clip that the bots flag. This was manually claimed. So I've disputed this claim. The dispute's under review. Um, these people have 30 days to, to look at my dispute and say, yeah, we agree with you, or no, we don't agree with your dispute. So generally what happens over here is when it comes to a manual dispute, which I'm gonna give you another great example of it in a little minute, generally a company comes in, they say, hey, listen, like 30 seconds of this video is uh, from us, we're gonna claim this, and what YouTube does is they basically give away the ad revenue to that creator or that company. Now, if you dispute this, YouTube puts all that money into a little escrow account and basically waits for the dispute to resolve. So let's look at the actual dispute real quickly. YouTube will say when it comes to a content ID claim, basically you wanna make sure you have all the necessary rights in, the, in the content of your video, using the content in a way that qualifies as a copyright exception, and believing your video was misidentified or an error was made. So this is where it gets into a legal situation. Before you dispute a content ID claim, you might wanna learn about public domain and fair use, which is why I went through the whole legal lesson earlier on. Keep in mind that these are not legitimate reasons to dispute a claim. You can't just give credit, you can't own a copy of the video or song, and you can't choose to not monetize the video. Re this is a literal content ID situation. This is a DMCA scenario. So yeah. even if you are not profiting off of the work just by putting it up on your channel or giving credit, you know, giving exposure, that's still not enough. If you don't submit a dispute, there are a few other ways to resolve a content ID claim, such as removing the claim and content from the video, which YouTube provides tools to mute tracks or literally trim out portions of your video. Ultimately, YouTube can't decide whether you should dispute a claim because that's legal advice. You should only dispute a claim if you're confident that you have all the necessary rights to use the claim and content. Repeated or malicious abuse of the dispute process can result in penalties against your video or channel. Now, to understand, uh, this is wording that obviously should scare anybody that's getting claimed. Now, if somebody falsely claims you, it really sounds like from that wording, yes, you have to basically prove that your, you know, video is completely fair use. And if we find that your video is not in fair use or the claim doesn't go your way, you're the one getting punished. 
To explain how bad the system can be, look at this situation where somebody uploaded 10 hours of white noise, literally generated white noise that anybody can do with their computer right now. Because of this, there were plenty of companies that came in and claimed literal sections. So this one company, uh, on behalf of white noise sleep therapy, jumped in and said, this random few minutes, six hours in, was theirs. Then you've got other people like El Moele Records. Then you've got white noise sleep therapy again. Then you've got Rachel Conwell, who said this is a symphonic distribution. Yeah, apparently white noise is part of the fucking symphony, okay? So initially, if you wanted to dispute all of these, which I guess would be their each individual claims, yeah, you better hope to God it doesn't go wrong. Now, YouTube needs to have a level of common sense where they look at situations like this, or maybe have the ability to provide further context. Like, imagine if you showed YouTube systems Aiden Ross's blatant disregard for actually using this system in good faith and using it to silence critics, then they would- Yeah, like, it's crazy. Like, he openly fucking- Aiden Ross, if he hadn't reversed those claims, could quite literally snitch? What do you mean? Yo, I'm I'm sorry, dude. Look, I look at idiots professionally online. Like, it is a big part of my job. I look at some of the most pathetic human beings that are, like, literally barely alive, don't even know how they're alive. They have to be consistently reminded that, like, at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break, and if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. Uh for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime or by getting gifted a sub if you're lucky because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. Listen, I'm going to run that ad break and I'm going to continue on my rant. I look at stupid people professionally, okay? I look at some of the dumbest hogs on the fucking planet and I love it. I love every moment of it. And I'm not even joking when I say Aiden Ross's fandom are literally the dumbest human beings I have ever... I, I don't even know if I can call them human beings at this point. They are some of the dumbest fucking idiots I've ever seen. Like, someone going in, someone coming in here and being like, oh, you snitch, dog. When, like, you're the person that you're standing, like, very clearly and maliciously is going after small content creators... Like, it is so insane. I cannot excuse this for someone being a child. I'm sorry. You're not just a child at that point. You're a really fucking stupid child, okay? Your parents should have smacked you up a little bit more, okay? You were one of those collar kids that, like, your parents had you on a fucking leash, and yet it didn't take. You know what I mean? God damn, dude. Holy fucking shit. I mean, actually, unironically, some of the absolute stupidest fucking kids I've ever encountered and the worst part is they're not even kids the worst part is they are full-grown adults in many circles can you not joke about abuse shut the fuck up bitch shut up six month subscriber i have literally donkeys in my fucking audience look that's what i have to deal with on a daily basis that's a six month subscriber like, can you not joke about child abuse shut the fuck up shut up Okay, shut the fuck up. Shut your stupid, dumb, I'm the wokest motherfucker in the room mouth up for three and a half seconds, you narcissistic, like, attention pedophile. That's what you are. You cannot have a conversation outside of one that does not center you and your personal trauma for three and a half seconds. That's what I deal with on a daily basis. These fucking donkeys that exist in my audience that always chirp at the opportunity. They're like, well, there's a moment where I can be a fucking woke lord and like make the conversation turn to me. You attention pedophile psycho. Shut the fuck up. Okay? Shut up. This is not about you. I'm sorry. I know you grew up in a Connecticut household in a McMansion and you think every single subject matter is actually... Uh, somehow related to you, but this is not about you. Shut your stupid fucking mouth, okay? And even then, the Aiden Ross fandom is dumber than that fucking idiot that I just banned, okay? God damn, dude. I can't even fucking... Oof. It's the stupidity that frustrates me, okay? It's the stupidity that frustrates me. It's like, how can you be this stupid? I thought debate pervers were the worst. We got attention pedophiles in the chat now. Anyway... Let's continue. It would absolutely reverse these claims. Again, this isn't even entirely YouTube's fault. The problem with Content ID and the reason it was made was literally to make sure YouTube couldn't die. See, YouTube and DMCA situations are scenarios where like YouTube literally has had to fight this even up till this modern day. 
Literally looking at Content ID, the system is designed primarily to actually cater to MCNs and big production groups like people that make movies, people who make music, literally so that they can actually have the ability to match content, block it, and also garnish revenue off of it. It's literally a compromise method created for YouTube to survive. So again, if you look into the history of copyrighted material, between 2007 and 2009, Viacom, Mediaset, and English's Premier League filed lawsuits against YouTube claiming that it had done too little to prevent the uploading of copyrighted materials. So Viacom actually at one point demanded one billion in damages. So again, when it came time to criticism for this entire situation, basically if a YouTube user disagrees with the decision by Content ID, again, you fill in a form disputing the decision. And again, that claim is sent directly to the party that owns the supposed copyright, who effectively has the final decision. And of course, if they don't respond properly, if they don't respond on time, yeah, it'll go forward in your case. But remember, if you're doing content ID stuff and you are disputing it, you're literally getting involved in legal affairs. And again, Internet Anarchist is not the only YouTuber this has happened to. Omni, great friend of the show, been on our podcast a couple times, has said they doubled down on the copyright claim and now my channel is at risk of getting a strike again. If anyone has been affected by Create Magic MGT, let me know. I'm officially going to war with them and YouTube's broken copyright system, more tomorrow. So again, he's talking about where his channel is getting absolutely content ID'd. And of course, YouTube even jumped into it and said that the claims are invalid and they're taking appropriate action. YouTube, these claims shouldn't even be existing in the first place. Again, the content ID system was designed literally to appease users, to appease a lot of these big corporations. But when it comes to people like Aiden Ross, who are mishandling it and misusing this technology, it could absolutely cause an entire chunk of the platform to go at risk. Now, one of the things that really hits me here is obviously from Aiden Ross, whose content pretty much also like derives from reaction content and basically going on Discord and reacting to memes or, you know, of other videos and other content that he finds on the internet. I find it hilarious that he's so liberally handing out these copyright claims, uh, again, maliciously to people he doesn't like. The problem with actually enacting something like this is at the end of the day, the DMCA system and the content ID system is something YouTube has to abide by. No one likes it, not even YouTube. In order to survive, they've created both these systems in order to alleviate their, 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 their tense relationships with some of the big players in Hollywood, so to speak. Now, the thing is with a system like this is while the, there is some net good that I guess it can provide for some of these companies, using it like a nuclear cannon against other content creators pretty much opens the possibilities for potential lawsuits to kick in. It only takes one lawsuit to truly change the landscape of the kind of content that yeah. all of us create on the entire platform. This is exactly why it's like, it's like adpocalypse, man. You don't want to fucking rock the boat for everyone else, dumbasses. That's the whole point. You fucking do this, you do this, and someone, maybe even someone like myself, is going to fucking turn around and, and, and push back. Is going to help others also uh, defend themselves against you fucking issuing false copy strikes. And then all of a sudden, you've now, unfortunately, created even more legal precedent that will make it even harder for people to do collaborative content. That will make it even harder for people to do, like, actual fucking... Uh, you know, derivative content. All art is ultimately derivative. This is why most YouTubers are like, dude, don't fucking do that. Don't fucking do that. There is like a, like a social contagion, right? Like YouTubers understand that this ruins like a, a fundamental way of making content online, which is why YouTubers especially get very upset when you turn around and fucking do this shit. Okay, you are such, you are such a donkey dick, you know, short term Andy for, for behaving this way. But even if you didn't want to get into the ethics of it and the idea of like, hey, the, the ramifications, this is just illegal. Okay. And at the end of the day, it's like, it's a shame that Aiden Ross is part of a select group of streamers that are actually using this tool to cause harm directly to this platform. You know, it, it's one thing to just react to the content without asking. It's another hilarious situation to react to the content, cover it, and then suddenly believe that you are exempt from the same rules that you constantly break. Yeah. And then hand out these absolute <laughs> copyright gems like they're no tomorrow the iron yeah again the irony is that like aiden were with me this is the different one this is actually about 
Aiden and I show speed like copy striking random YouTubers for commentary that they engaged in. But like even with what he fucking did, like this is a guy who watched the Super Bowl, man. He watched the Super Bowl live on a platform that like somehow was able to shield him and porn. At the end of the day, what Aiden Ross has done is basically abuse a system that exists. And ultimately, if it continues to be abused, it could lead to really, really massive ramifications for the platform. And honestly, YouTube needs to step in right now and prevent some of these organizations from having their content ID tools. At the end of the day, this is a privilege to even be part of the content ID system. And clearly, we've just already started to see literal streamers abuse it through third-party MCNs. Because again, from what I understand, from what I know, this isn't Aiden doing it directly, it really does appear to be a third-party MCN that's handing it out on behalf of Aiden Ross. Now, I guess the only silver line- Aiden was doing it directly. His editor was doing it to his ops, according to his, like, first-hand knowledge of the situation, for the record, is that we looked at the clip earlier when he was, like, on the phone talking to- another content creator, um, like very clearly saying like, oh no, I'm just going after my ops, which he literally apologized because he went after everyone across the board and some of his friends got caught in the copy strikes. So he basically turned around and was apologizing to one of his friends that he accidentally copy striked saying that, uh, you know, my bad, uh, you know, I'm just only going after ops. Lining of this is Aiden Ross is doing content claims, which again, YouTube should absolutely be looking into and YouTube, YouTube should be handling misuse of this platform, misuse of this tool, uh, so that honestly the lives of many YouTubers can be easier. Literally, it feels like this tool is used to silence criticism and actually put risks on a lot of smaller channels because larger channels know full well that no channel wants to go through a lawsuit, especially those who are living paycheck to paycheck and can't afford a lawsuit. Now, of course, content strikes, copyright strikes, which are even wilder forms of, 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 of attacks. You know, one recent example was CGP Grey, who literally issued two strikes against a channel known as Logging Through History. Now, from what I understand, these were reaction videos that he was striking, and there were significant chunks of his videos played. Now, regardless of what you think about how much commentary is added and what you believe is fair use, nobody knows what fair use is unless somebody gets sued. Now, again, two copyright strikes is the super nuclear option because adding one strike... Yeah, because a third one means your channel is bye-bye, gone. Strike extra means your channel is gone. Now, of course, from what I understand, vlogging through history got one strike removed, but generally, this is like the severe nuclear option. And even if CGP Grey was in the right, it's still a severe nuclear salvo to throw. And it's a scary situation when, again, YouTubers are suing other YouTubers or literally initiating legal actions. And it doesn't even extend, like, false copyright strikes could literally even involve video game companies. Like, I've been wanting to do one video on something known as SPT AKI, which is single player Tarkov. Now, generally, I hate Battle State games because while they've made a good game known as Escape from Tarkov, they are terrible fucking developers for a multiplayer game, all right? Escape <laughs> from Tarkov probably has the highest ratio of cheaters to legitimate players that I've ever seen. And C CGP great strike Ludwig? Wait, really? He's like that? I thought he was chill. What the fuck? Hey, Chad, who's the YouTuber he's currently watching? We're watching Mudahar, also known as Ordinary Gamers who is mood and mad. I stole that from the chatter. Some chatter said that. CGP is Reddit incarnate. Your vibes radar is off. He's incredibly anti-react. Yeah, I mean, there's some... Look, by the way, there are some YouTubers who are like that and you just got to fucking, you know, you just got to not do anything about it. You don't look at their... You don't react to their videos then. All games have cheaters. Oh my fucking God, what a bizarre take. What are you talking about? Escape from Tarkov is a wonderful game that has been completely eviscerated by cheaters. Even I know the jiggle thing now. What the fuck do you mean? Escape from Tarkov is like uniquely bad. This doesn't even begin to cover the outright stealing on Facebook video or react channels where no talent hacks add a few laps or nods by side by side. It was two years ago. Wait, no way. He's still mad about it too. And he bought fucking blue check mark. He's a blue check mark Andy. Tarkov is the worst when it comes to cheaters, but devs have cleaned it up recently. Also do the RMT in game. He's pretty against fair use, have been since the beginning and talked about it a lot on both Hello Internet and Cortex podcast. I mean, I guess I have only seen some of his videos in passing and I did not realize that it was like that. That's that's sad to hear. 
I don't know, man. We're all in the same fucking content game. It's just like, uh, I don't know. That's, it, it's like wild that he's still shitting on Lud like that. I mean, I love shitting on Lud, but come on now. Rare Ludwig L. Oh, God. Down with the state. I'm on the Council of Riz. I love when someone is an anarchist, but then they're like <laughs> IP laws, copyright. I'm so with it. And I'm also going to defend the monarchy defender. Fucking first Noam Chomsky, then this. Anarchist for copyright and also monarchy. <laughs> and for the record, yes, I'm aware that CGP Grey once made a YouTube video where he like tried to say that there was a reason for the monarchy to exist and it actually brought a lot of money. Um, I know that he was wrong on that. But even then, I thought that he was, you know, I, I guess I haven't like, why do people hate on Lud? Nobody hates on Lud. Sludge Dev, we're joking. It's called a joke. We're joking. We like Ludwig. It seems very bitter that corporations can ruthlessly, ruthlessly strike people and take their shit down, whereas individuals are expected not to. I don't know, man. Definitely not the way to go about it regardless. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, if you think that, like, corporations ruthless, Why can't I talk today? Ruthlessly striking people down, then, you know, why would you want to be like, well, I should have that right, too. <laughs> It's like looking at DuPont Chemical and being like, if they can dump toxic waste into my natural water supply, why am I not allowed to do that to my neighbor's lawn? What the fuck? <laughs> it's, it's very strange to look at a shitty situation and be like, I should be able to do that as well. Anyway, I do understand it though. Look, not all reacts are the same. You know, not all reacts are built the same. Obviously, there are differences. Uh, there's a best practices and standards that are up to the individual copyright holder. Ultimately, they could still do it. They could still, um, they could still technically copy strike you. So that's the reason why we don't really look at channels that are, are like that. I didn't know CGP Gray was like that. I'm actually kind of surprised. Um, anyway, <laughs> I want to put in fake DMCA's too. Yeah, I'm actually a temporarily embarrassed multinational corporation. Jobry said Aiden Ross, a guy who illegally streamed the Super Bowl to 100,000 kids, somehow believes he has the authority to copyright claim anyone who uses his clips under fair use to even slightly criticize him. Alpha male wannabes are always the most fragile people in the world. Vid soon. Uh-oh. There's going to be a fucking 85-minute Jobry video drop in here. A lot of content creators similar to CGP Grey are really mad, rightfully so, about Facebook video just stealing their videos. No commentary whatsoever. Uh... And getting a shitload of revenue. Yeah, that that is totally fucked up. I, I don't have a disagreement with that. I'm talking about someone who's like genuinely trying to make an effort to like, you know, look at someone's content, uplift it in some way, and then add additional commentary off of it. Utilize it as a launching point. We've been watching a 22-minute Mudahar video that also heavily features, uh, you know, something that is important to me. And, you know, I've probably been reacting to this for the past hour and a half. Now, uh, technically, Budahar or others might have an issue with that. They might say, well, it doesn't matter that you fucking watch through the whole... You still watch through the whole video. It doesn't matter if you fucking uh, genuinely and legitimately improved it or whatever. And that is true. They can do that. And if that is the case, then I will never watch their videos again. I will apologize. I will take the video down. Um, this is my policy. Okay? This is absolutely my policy. I think that... Um, this is unfortunately the only way to do react content that already has existed on YouTube that everyone does, um, uh, that, and has done for a very long time. The only way to do it on Twitch is by basically watching the whole video and like giving your commentary on it and then having your editors chop it up for the best bits. That's how I would do it if I was offline. And that's how I'm doing it when I'm online in front of other people. You know what I mean? Do I personally think, and others who are content creators personally think that Twitch streamers and other YouTubers watching and reacting to your footage greatly uh, improves your your uh, SEO? Absolutely. I do think that. Some people still might disagree with that, and they have every right to do so. I respect their decision, and uh, I will, you know, I, I apologize, and I will never watch their videos again, which is originally what happened with the ReactGate what sparked the react gate thing as well. I was, I said, I'm very sorry that I watched your video. I will never do that again. And I thought it would end there, but then it, it, it kept, you know, piling. SEO is search engine optimization. Yeah. Several streamers seem to have no problem using your stream as their own content and commenting in real time. I don't think that qualifies as react or even content, but whatever, it doesn't matter. I have no issue with it. Everyone knows I have no issue with it. Um, 
So yeah, let's continue. And while they don't care so much about fixing it, the community has banded together to produce single player mods, which allow you to experience the progression, the tension of Tarkov without the hackers. Literally, the community had one of the best videos by a YouTuber known as Goat, who literally made a video called The Wiggle That Killed Tarkov, where he produced oh, yeah, a video where he I looked watched. at Tarkov content, covered the hacking community around it, and basically showed that the situation was far harsher than you could ever imagine. Now, of course, single player Tarkov is a mod that, you know, plenty of people played. One of those users, one of those users was Blue Drake42, who produced content on SBT AKI, which actually ended up getting taken down by Battlestate Games because they just couldn't handle any of that footage being shown around. Now, of course, yes, they own the game, but clearly this person made their, this, this person used their gaming footage, their game to make a proper fair use based video covering a mod that they didn't like and they wanted to basically selectively enforce, uh, you know, copyright strikes against this person's content. It's bad to a point where they literally had to make their own video game. I'm not even joking with you, Operation Harsh Doorstep. So they wouldn't risk their channel effectively getting nuked by any company that just felt like they wanted to, on the dime of a hat, toes, thank you for the tank if this throw copyright strikes. But of course, compared to Aiden Ross, this is at least more legitimate because they actually own this content. Again, the point of this fair use stuff is once these strikes get thrown around and there's actually going to have to be lawsuits that take place, it could change the landscape of YouTube. Now, of course, to whittle it down back to planet Earth here with Aiden Ross, I think YouTube should absolutely look into the entire management company that he uses uh, to issue these content ID claims because, again, it, individual channels don't really have that right or luxury. Like the most that you can do on an individual channel is just message the other creator. For instance, in, if I go to my actual YouTube like history real quick, if I go to my YouTube channel, in the copyright tab, you can literally see other channels that just use my content. Now, of course, there are these channels that literally make reaction videos. Like for instance, this guy known as Big Dog 96 literally watched in the entirety of one of my videos, my Chris Chan coverage uh, from a year ago on his channel. Now, am I gonna go out and issue a content ID claim or a copyright strike or, 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 or threaten this person? No, I feel pretty humble that they're watching the content in the first place. But to give you an idea, YouTube will create these. They'll tell you how much yeah. your video is because they have an amazing content match tool. But of course, ultimately, you do need a company, which a lot of these streamers appear to have, that are issuing these manual claims. But the thing is, when you issue a manual claim, you are actually sending out legal notices. And I really wish that these guys didn't stop playing so fast and loose because ultimately, if one false claim like this does end up going to court, this could fundamentally change the way we produce content and fair use is handled on YouTube. Anyways though, ladies and gentlemen, I really think YouTube needs to step in and make sure that Aiden isn't misusing this tool, like any streamer really. And honestly, Aiden, you should stop being a fucking beta bitch and doing this in the first place. It's yeah. a real beta cuck behavior. And honest to God, honestly, it just makes you look like a fool on the internet. But that being said though, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out. Great video by some ordinary gamers. Um, I mean, look, they backed away because of social pressure, it seems. Hopefully they don't do it again. Hopefully they don't reignite this again. Um, but, but that's only because, like, they're fucking... That's only because, like, you know... They're YouTubers as well, and they're fucking up everybody's bag. Hey everyone, uh, I'm the editor. Uh, thanks for watching till the end. Uh, hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, then please drop a like uh, and subscribe. Why not leave a Kaya L in the comments down below so that I know that you reached this point of the video. Hmm? If you'd like more content like this one, then uh, check the video up here on top of my head. We're literally in front of my face right here.